Alright guys, hello, another video for my Plex pals out there, as we've now got this new user interface to the updated Plex app on our mobile devices. Now, this is a staggered release, we haven't all got it at the same time, I only got it myself much earlier today, you might not have got it yet, and you're just interested in what all the fuss is about. I wanted to do a video to give my first impressions, point out the performance, which I don't think is brilliant, and show some ways that we can actually improve the experience so those of you that haven't got the update yet i suggest you don't auto enable updates and you choose to do it at a much later date keep an eye online see how things progress so the first thing we point out is that i'm on the home screen we know we're on the home screen because it says home at the bottom in orange we've got libraries live tv on demand and discover i'll show how we can tidy up the home screen a little bit later on in the video what i want to start with is in the top right where my icon is we'll tap that go to settings and account. Even though I had automatically sign in enabled on the previous version of the app, through the update, it turned that off. I had to turn it back on again, which was quite annoying. Why do I want this on? Well, I already unlock my phone with a pin or my thumbprint. When I load up this app, I don't need another layer slowing me down to get access to my content. The performance is bad enough as it is without me being delayed. So yes, I have a pin for my user, but that's just to stop family accidentally logging in, is it? I don't want them to be watching content. And then when I go to play it on my user, it's giving me all this crap on the home screen. That's nothing to do with what I was watching. Everybody has their own account for a reason for it to track their content that they're watching. So on the home screen, we can see I've got we continue watching for the X-Files, we'll just open that up so you can see some nice artwork there. The lovely Gillian Anderson, the name of the show, the X-Files, the name of the episode, that it's season five, episode 18, when it was originally aired, May 3rd, 1998. Scarily, I watched this when it was brand new. I feel very, very old now. Uh, the runtime, 45 minutes, the suggested age rating, the score on IMDB, so supposedly a good episode at eight, out of 10 uh, we can see i can resume it i can play it from the start the tick says it's been watched i can do the down arrow to download it the three dots is for more actions there's a blurb the description of the episode i can tap on to expand that out to read it we can see who directed the episode the video the audio codec information and the subtitle information if they are present so yeah there's more shows i can scroll across to the right as I go down, we can see what's recently been added into my libraries. I have quite a lot of libraries on my Plex Media Server. Now, some of you think that's strange, but there is method to my madness because I share this content with family. So for the 3D films, for example, I can only enjoy this stuff in 3D through my VR headset. Our 3D TV broke. Not many TVs do it anymore. Some projectors do. Uh, but the only way for me to be able to enjoy this content is through the VR headset. If I give access to my mum, who doesn't have a 3D TV, she will think that the TV's broken when she accidentally plays these films because of the way it's put onto the screen. So then she'll call me, tell me the TV's broken when it's not. It will be a waste of time that all could have been avoided had I just not given her access to that library. So 4K films, why have I divided that out? Well. I've got family that aren't in the house. I can let I can stream this to them. They can have access to it. But my upload speeds are much lower than my download speeds. I don't really want the family all having access to full 4K quality. Now I've got a choice here. I can either say you don't have access to any of the 4K library, or they can have access to it, but I limit the quality to no more than say 1080p. So it isn't using up my upload speed for them to get that content. And I've got the films library, so that's 1080p quality or below. Uh, over 2,000 films, quite happy for the family to have access to that. All this other stuff, I've got TV shows, so anime, which we'll say is animation with an adult theme versus you know what I'd call cartoons and animation, which is really safe for children. So again, I can stop certain people having access to anime if they're not interested in it, or I think they're going to have children that might accidentally watch something they're not supposed to because they think it's animated it's supposed to be for kids when it's really not so let's let's head back up to the top we don't want the video to be too long we'll go to the next tab along which is libraries so we can see in the top left it is my tv show library we can see we're on the recommended page so again the continue watching the recently released episode so 
as in they've recently been aired. And then we've got recently added. So I could add in Star Trek from the 1960s. That wasn't recently aired, but it could have been recently added into the library. So we've got start watching. I find that like the further we go down, the less interested I am the suggestions. So I very rarely use this page at all. What I tend to do is continue watching from a home screen or I just go browse. And now we've got all of the titles from A to Z. Now we can see that's listed on the right hand side. Don't try and tap say M. If we hold our finger on that right side of the screen, we can then scroll down that way. That's the easiest way I find to do it. Get down to M. And again, if I want to go back up, so there's M, go all the way up to the top rather than swiping which can take time. I just want you to get an idea of the performance and quicker ways to navigate. So across the top, we've got collections. So think of that as like box sets and categories. Now you might not see that because uh, it could be hidden being a Plex Pass feature. I pay for the lifetime Plex Pass. The price of that I think is more than doubling end of April. So if you want it, now is the time. So yeah, TV shows, we can go into the top left. So it's saying, see all libraries see the apps hung on me I'm not impressed all right we'll have to close it i'm not going to hide anything open plex again still waiting there we go libraries tap in the top left and we want films so again recommended home screen as i scroll down recently released movies what I've recently added into the library, top movies in the thriller category. Now we've got top movies with Corey Martin. I have no idea who Corey Martin is, should I? Uh, I've only got one film that is in, Night at the Museum. Now had it said top movies with Ben Stiller, that would make more sense. I probably have at least 10 films uh, with him in, you know, Meet the Fockers and the sequels and Night at the Museum and the sequels, Zoolander and its sequel and so on. Yeah. Uh, Along came Polly with Jennifer Aniston. So there'd be more to look at than just this one film. So let's show you how to turn that off. If we go to my Plex uh, server settings, if you don't know how to get it on a browser, plex.tv forward slash web. Hope you know how to get here already. But we're going to do the spanner icon for settings. And on the left, we're just going to make sure we have selected the server that we want to make the changes to. Some people run more than one. I'm going to go down to manage our libraries. So I've made this more difficult for myself having 13 libraries, but for films, so we can do manage the recommendations. And when it says top movies by actor or director, we can just untick that so it's no longer in, in blue. So I'd have to do that for all of these libraries for this pointless recommendation to be taken away. Let's head back to my phone again. So top unwatched movies and so on. We can do the browse tab. So it's, as I said, well over 2000 films in this library. It's had time to cache these, these thumbnails in. It's not the first time I've opened the library up. Just give you an idea of the performance. Let's scroll down near the bottom. All right. So let's do the live TV tab. This is where things are going to get drastically worse. So I'm waiting. Still waiting. Probably missing the start of the show by now. It's far from instant. All right, there we go. All right, so under live TV, we've got a couple of options. or well, for me anyway, because I do have a TV tuner, HD Home Run. This is connected to an aerial. It's then connected to my network. So any TV, phone, whatever you like, that's on my network can access these TV channels. So we can see there is the TV guide. Whether it's for today, I can do it for tomorrow or the rest of the week. The line is showing where we are. So about halfway through uh, the ITV evening news. We can scroll down. We can see the channels and what's on. If I go to the top left where it says Hono 1, that's the name of my server. Below that it says Live TV Plex Channel. So we'll tap on that. And again, there's going to be a little bit of wait. But this is the content Plex gives us and it's supported by adverts. So as you watch this, it will be interrupted occasionally by adverts. Not that I watch this very often, if at all, but I appreciate that it's there and the fact that it's free and it is supported by ads. 
So here in the UK, we have like Sky Television. We had it when I was much younger. My friends have it now. I go to their house, and they turn it on, and it's adverts. And it's still adverts, and adverts, and more adverts. I think mean, you're paying just for the privilege to watch adverts. Okay, eventually a film will come on, or a TV show, but paying to watch adverts, I think, is ridiculous. So Netflix, Disney+, Plus, when they say, oh, you can have it cheaper if it's supported by ads. No, no, I'm not paying you if it's got adverts in it. They increase the price. So if you don't want the ads, you have to pay even more money. So they just price themselves out. I'm not interested in their subscriptions anymore. But each to their own, you do what you want to do. The next tab over that we've got is on demand. So again, this is all from Plex and it is free, but it will be interrupted with adverts. If you don't care about any of this, we can turn it off. So let's head back to our server settings. So our spanner over to the left at the top, we've got our online media sources. So live TV, we can disable those Plex TV channels. This will still keep my uh, TV tuner, just turn off the Plex channels and movies and shows. We can disable that, make sure we are saving our changes. Let's head back to my phone screen. Now let's close the app down and open it up again. And we can see across the bottom that on demand has been taken away. If I open up live TV again, the performance isn't great. We're going to be waiting. But what you will notice is in the top left, there is no option to tap to select the Plex content. All I've got is from the live tuner. Now what I do need to do is check my other devices like the Shield TV, because they're not using this new updated user interface. Maybe the live TV has been unpinned from that home screen. I'll have to go double check that. But as far as the app's concerned on the phone, it's got rid of the, the on-demand content. It's just my content. Many of us, that's all we care about with Plex. We care about our server, our content, not all of this extra stuff being made available. The final tab that we've got is Discover. I kind of like that it's there. Uh, I'm a little bit nosy. So we can see what's trending, um, what's new, what people are watching. Know what's new on my services but we've got like activity so i can see what my family's been watching uh, like my content what they've found interesting you know without having to ask them uh, i can see you know when it was and what they watched so there we go hopefully it's helped you out a little bit just a quick video just to let you know i'm not that happy with the performance i do suggest you wait a little bit hopefully things can improve over time with more updates but yeah how it looks, I'm reasonably happy with. It's just the performance I'm not particularly sold on. So let's leave it there, guys. Have a great day. Have a great evening, whatever it is you choose to do after watching this. And as always, I'll see you when I see you next. Ciao for now.